Hey guys, this is Lee with the Southeast Region Chapter. Uh, I was outside shooting my bow and it started raining. We have a little thunderstorm coming through here in North Georgia, so I thought I'd take this moment and go over my gear that I'm gonna take on this Wyoming mule deer hunt. I've got it all sort of laid out in front of me, clothes and gear, sleep systems behind me. Uh, and I thought I'd just show you what I'm gonna take, how I'm gonna use it. Um, going over clothes first, uh, it's gonna be low 40s to mid 80s for the majority of the time and they're in a bit of a drought right now and it looks like they're going to continue to stay in that drought so i'm not preparing for super cold weather i'm not preparing for super hot or or all that wet um, i'm just preparing for a wider range of stuff um, so having spent some time out in colorado during the summer during the train to hunt event um, last year um, i know that early and late it can get very very windy out there um, so that's kind of really where you see like the temperature drops is wind kind of coming up and down especially in some of those open areas and at higher elevation which i'll be anywhere from about seven to about twelve thousand feet depending on the day um, most of the clothes you guys have seen before um, online i'm using a lot of the first light stuff you know what it looks like but it is the Fusion pattern in case anybody's pattern happy. Um, I actually wear it's a lot. I actually wear a lot of solid colors too. Um, but as far as patterns go, if I did have to pick a pattern, I guess it's fusion. Um, I don't really like the three realistic stuff all that much. To be honest with you, I find it's a little bit dark. Uh, the fusion stuff works well for me, and I've had a lot of success. But I, like I said, I also hunt a lot of solid colors. Um, matter of fact, the pants are in. The pants are going to be um, in a solid color. It's the green, it's the solid green, it's the pine color. Uh, first light, I'm going, I'm going with the merino pant. I'm going with the canabs. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because, again, it's going to be a little bit drier, so I'm not going to have to worry about merino wool holding water and not drying out. Even though it can keep you warm when it's wet, it does take forever to dry, which is one of the benefits and one of the reasons that people will wear the nylon pant, like the Corey Guy pant or any other kind of nylon pant. I actually really like one from a brand called Cool, uh, K-U-H-L. You can get it at REI or any other kind of outdoor uh, shop. It's one of my favorite hiking pants of all time. Uh, they're great, but when you walk around, you get that swish, swish, swish sound. Um, you can't have that when you're stalking. It's just not going to work. Um, although that stuff is great for wet weather and colder weather, um, especially when you have snow because in, in early mornings because it's just going to, the dew is just going to evaporate off of it super quick and you, so that stuff's great for that but everything i'm running here um as far as as far as my non-warmth things um my non-jackets are all going to be on 100 percent merino wool from first light i've got just their standard t-shirt this would be my base layer and i'm also using a chama hoodie i may actually depending on how the Depending on how the weather works out, I may actually just forget the t-shirt and just use the Chama hoodie. Um, you can roll the sleeves up, you can unzip it. It's, a, it, it's a full it's a full half zip so I can air it out and still have the hood on um, f for, a bit of sun uh, for a bit of sun protection and stuff during the long glassing session. So that's sort of the idea uh, there. Um, I'm going to take a couple of pairs of socks, a heavy and a light, uh, both from Darn Tough. The light ones are gonna be just my standard everyday sock that I'm using all day long. The heavier ones are, for if it does get a little bit colder, are mainly kind of when I sleep and I just kind of want my feet to be a bit warmer. Um, I am a suspenders guy when I've got a belt, uh, when I've got a belt on my hip, uh, a hip belt on my pack. Sorry, I couldn't talk there. If I'm not using a pack that's got a belt, then I actually prefer a belt on me. Uh, I actually prefer a belt for my pants, but I do find that a belt interferes with the hip belt on a pack. So that's why I use the suspenders. Um, the one jacket that I am gonna take, uh, as far as warmth goes, this is probably one of my favorite jackets ever. I use it all the time, even just wearing it around town. I wear it on hikes. Uh, I've worn it down to 30 degrees and been fine, and I've worn it um, up into the 60s and been fine. It is the Arteryx uh, Adam SL. Um, you can wear this like a heavy base layer. You can wear it like a uh, slightly insulated ultralight puppy. Um, it's got a very great ultralight hood that's got a little bit of a bill because I actually don't really wear hats all that often. Um, 
So it works out great for that. Um, I really, really like this jacket. And it's even slightly waterproof. I wouldn't want to wear it in a downpour, um, but it will resist some, some uh, if you got some light snow or something like that coming in. Um, and it packs down into nothing and it dries incredibly fast when it does get wet and it keeps you warm. So I like it a lot. This is gonna be probably like my main jacket. Uh, but I do have the Sears Ultralight Puffy from First Light. That's gonna be more like if it does get super cold um, during some of these early and late glassing sessions and I just kind of want that extra sort of wind stopper. Um, that's what that's gonna be for. It's also gonna function as my pillow. Um, that's gonna go in a stuff sack of my, uh, of my sleeping pad. Um, Going into the sleep system itself, this is a Nemo, I believe it's a Neptune, I don't remember, but it's a 2P, three season tent, just a standard sort of backpacking tent. Um, but it's definitely on the lighter side of things. It's not, a, oh, it's not an overly heavy tent, and I'm making it even lighter by only taking the rainfly and the footprint. I'm not taking the actual body of the tent that you would normally see. Um, I can cinch this, this rainfly tight all the way down to the ground when it's staked out. Um, so that way I get a complete seal. I don't have to worry about any kind of water coming in, but if I do want ventilation, I can definitely open it up. I can also open up these vestibules, this one behind me zips all the way down, so I can get as much ventil as much or a little ventilation as I want to with this. Um, and it's gonna work out great. I've used this setup a ton before and it works great. Uh, the only time I really prefer actually taking the actual body of the tent is when I'm on an area that's going to uh, be kind of soft and grassy like if you're camping up um, if you're camping up in North Georgia or um, or in, like in the Natahala National Forest and some of those areas where they've got the like on a like a some of the, the little peaks of sort of open fields that they have out there like like if you were like if you guys were watching the um, the comments and stuff come by not too long ago that's a great time for the, one of those tents because you've got the floor down there, so you're not gonna have to worry about condensation coming up. It's gonna be dry, but yet you want some air flowing through, so you've got that mesh opening and stuff. That's a good time to take that sort of tent. This is a bit different, um, and there is that possibility of rain, and I'll be back several miles in, and I just don't wanna take both, so this is gonna be good for that. Uh, sleeping bag, I did decide to go on the bag versus the quilt. If you watched the live Q&A video we did on Facebook, I was sort of on the fence about do I want to just take a quilt versus taking a full-on bag. The quilt was going to leave me potentially a little bit cold, and the bag was going to leave me potentially a little bit hot. Um, I decided to go with the bag, and I can always unzip it and just use it as a blanket itself. So this is a Kelty um, dry-down bag. So it's their sort of hydro hydrophobic uh, down bag. Um, so it's not quite, I wouldn't say it's synthetic. I'm not really sure what the technology is that makes it that way, but I have gotten that bag wet before, um, both through some condensation on the top of it, um, as well as as well as well an open door when, when it started snowing once, and being inside the bag, I stayed perfectly dry. Um, so it's a good bag, I like it, and that's what it's gonna come with, um, and it should keep me plenty warm, and if I need to cool off more, I can. Sleep sleeping pad is the Nemo Tensor, um, it's a baffled type bag, sort of like the Therma Rest um, ultralight ones that are super popular. This one's slightly lighter than that, um, about the same warmth rating, and just a good overall bag. I, uh, pad, I like it a lot. Um, packs down to basically a Nalgene bottle size, so it can get very, very light, and it's very easy to inflate um, and patch and everything like that, so I couldn't really ask for more. Uh, as far as gear goes, I, I, I'm a pouch guy. I like keeping all my gear sort of separated and don't like things just running around loose in there. Um, so I do separate a lot of my stuff with dry bags. Um, even though they're already in their own little bags already, I, I put them in dry bags as well. Uh, kill kit. This is a little pouch from REI that I like because uh, you can... You can zip them and you can make them bigger or you can you can kind of compress them down. They don't weigh anything. The only downside is their mesh. So uh, just make sure that they're in something that's gonna keep it dry like that because water will get to it. 
Uh, these are four of the pillowcase size. Uh, it's not the tag bag brand. I actually don't remember what brand this is, but it's that sort of poly type bag that you can just hose off, um, doesn't expand. Um, it's just like a just like a pillowcase, but it's like a poly nylon kind of blend, not a cotton thing. So uh, they dry super quick. They let uh, moisture and, out and let cold, cooler air sort of come in, sort of to kind of keep cool. Um, and you can just throw them in the washing machine and they come out uh, nice and white again, um, perfectly reusable all the time. Uh, so I've got four of those in there, a little roll of electrical tape, some zip ties. Those are both uh, different things I might use to attach the tag to the actual carcass. Um, the tag is also in here. Um, it's a very convenient place to, to keep it. Some people like keeping it in their wallet or this or that. I like keeping it with the kill kit because that's the first thing I'm going to once the job's done. Um, as well as my Havilon knife is in there and a handful of extra blades. So that's that. Um, this is my just sort of overall, like my everything bag. This is an OR Backcountry Organizer. I like it because it's got lots of pockets to keep stuff organized inside of it, um, rather than everything just kind of rumbling around loose in there. On the outside, I keep all my hygiene sort of stuff, my toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, I'm a big sun care advocate, so I like uh, the sun bum stuff. This is just the stick version rather than having to deal with lotion and deal with all that sort of stuff. So um, a handful of the areas that I will be hunting are just open sagebrush. Um, well, I, well, where I'll just be exposed to the sun all the time. So this is actually very good and much needed. I also always carry chapstick. Sorry, Remy. Um, I know you, I know you kind of disagree with that, but I do love chapstick. Um, it's also actually very good fire starter uh, should you need something flammable. Um, I also keep a handful of wet wipes and that other kind of uh, mountain money type stuff in that front pouch there. Uh, bigger pouch, going down in here, all the first aid stuff. I carry everything from some Luco tape, um, some, pres some prescriptions that I have, some multivitamins, um, different kinds of tape that you might use uh, for not only actually repairing gear, uh, but also, you know, for, for repairing me as well. Um, some antihistamine stuff, because going into new areas, if you've never been to a certain area of the country before, uh, there are wildflowers, they're, you know, um, they're pollinating trees and things like that can definitely, if you're not used to that, um, and that stuff's flourishing at that time of the year, it can make your allergies act up and you can get, you know, runny nose, itchy eyes, and things like that, which is miserable to try and look through binoculars all the time when your eyes are just burning. So carry some some kind of like antihistamine, um, probably the non-drowsy kind. Um, but, but all the general sort of first aid kit stuff is there um, for my power, to power um, anything I have. I've got um, just a goal zero. This is, um, shoot, I don't remember the name of it, but it's just a little, I'm sorry, the Flip 20. It's written right there, I should probably read it. Uh, this will charge up a, a phone a couple of times, uh, about two or three times. It uh, works pretty well. Um, I don't really have a lot of electronics. I've got this and my my Sunto watch um, that I can charge. Uh, so, but it'll charge both of those things up about two to three times each when it's fully charged. Um, so it's a great little thing. I can just charge it up in the truck on the way there, on the drive there, take it out, throw it in here, and I'm good to go. Um, and I do carry um, a couple of extra, and I carry just a few extra uh, AAA batteries for the spot um, and for a headlamp. Should that go, even though they all have got fresh batteries in them now, just in case something happens um, and you get a dud. Got extra batteries for that. Fire starter, kind of gone over this before on, on the live Q&A, but a lighter, something to, uh, just a little striker, just in case lighter doesn't work, something I can run a knife against, uh, so a little flint. Um, carry a backup sort of wet fire, but I also make my own wet fire in the form of um, dryer lint rubbed with uh, 
some Vaseline. Um, you can use cotton, sorry, you can use cotton balls instead, uh, but dry lint's free and you're gonna throw it away anyways. Um, I also have a Labrador, which you saw during that Facebook Live video. He's sleeping right now. Um, so the, you actually get a little bit of a, a, a dog hair smell, uh, burning dog hair smell when he uses this stuff. If anybody's else got a Labrador that sheds all the time, the hair just ends up everywhere. So that's there. Um, water purification stuff in here is, um, I go through a couple of different steps on the water purification. We have the SteriPen that I'll use, but then afterwards I can actually throw, this is just a filter that'll go on top of an algae and bottle, just a little squeeze top. So like, let's say I get some water that's a little bit off colored. Um, so there's just some sediment in it. I can purify it and kill anything with the SteriPen, uh, but then I can unscrew the regular um, lid on the on the Nalgene bottle, screw this on, and I've got an extra filter that'll work for any, any kind of particulate. So that's good in there. Um, carry an extra bowstring, compass, um, my spoon for eating, as well as I carry a couple of these. I know I also, I already went over my regular black diamond headlight, but I have a couple of these Petzl E-Lights. Um, I have two of them, I have one of them in here and I keep one in my bino harness. And these are great, they're super duper small and lightweight. They're not overly bright, but they're just bright enough. They go through a couple of different um, beam sort of intensities, you know, just like you get with any headlamp, whether you want um, a few different levels of brightness. It's also got a red light on it, which is really good. You can pivot it out and it'll turn uh, 360 degrees. It'll lie flat against there. It just takes a normal watch battery. What's great about these is I can also, is I can often, I'll, I'll just use the little the strap that expands. I'll put it on my wrist, so it's great for that. I'll also take it and tie it to the um, just wrap it around one little like uh, the tent poles in here, and I can use it as a light. Um, if I'm truck camping, I'll actually just put it around the headrest of the back of the uh, the back of one of the seats in the truck, and then you can angle it down as much as you need. So. These are like 20 bucks, I think, at REI. It's probably a newer model that came out that's a little bit of a different color, but I love these things. I keep one in here and I keep one in my bino harness. So just in case, just in case the big light go down, these are great to have. So that is the entirety of the sort of like everything pouch. A um, Couple of extra odds and ends main water filtration this is an msr gravity filter uh, basically it's just a giant bag you can scoop a bunch of water up it's got a roll top just like these you cinch it tight you can hang it in a tree or in any kind of elevated position and just let it drain through the filter in a tube um, this is great because i basically have a kitchen sink at my disposal i can fill it up with water and just i can use it to rinse out anything that i need to rinse off anything that i need to um, a lot of times I'll just grab this, fill it up, and I'll just keep refilling that Nalgene every time I come back to camp. So I've always got water with it. Um, and this is the four liter size, so I can, I can carry a good bit of water with me at, at any given time. Um, I went over the black diamond headlamp. Um, the spot that I'm gonna use, uh, not a messaging of any kind, this is just a simple yes I'm okay, no I'm not okay. Beacon. Um, GPS, this is the Garmin 64S. I like it a lot, but I'm honestly kind of debating on whether I'm gonna leave it or not. All the, all the technology that goes into phones these days, I've got Onyx on my uh, phone. Otherwise, I would have had to buy the chip for all the landowner information stuff because a lot of the area that I'm going to is very checkerboarded, so I need to know where I'm at at all times. Um, I would have had to get the chip for Wyoming for this, which I don't have. So I'm probably gonna bring this, but it'll be more of a backup, just sort of waypoint thing. So I'll know where my truck is, I'll know where my tent is, um, I'll know where everything's at if I need to mark something and drop something off. This, that's kind of gonna be what this is for, and last minute sort of like, something happens with the phone, I drop it, break it, or whatever like that. I, I'll still have something to go by. Um, I'm gonna pack the thermocell. I don't really know if I'm gonna need it. This may be a last minute decision, the thing that stays at the truck. I haven't fully decided yet, but a thermocell, just because I'm so used to carrying it around here. You know, it just, it's, I can't imagine not having it. Um, but I'm on the fence about it. It may or may not stay, I don't know yet. 
Dino harness, this is an FHF gear harness. Um, I'm using the Maven 12 by 42s on a Vortex tripod. This is a Vortex uh, high country tripod. Not the lightest, but certainly not the heaviest one either. Very much in the middle. Um, I keep a little bottle of uh, Windicator there, um, as well as on the other side I keep Another one of those small little pets of lights, um, as well as a lens wipe that's down in here, and a Vortex rangefinder. Um, there. Stove. Uh, this is the MSR wind burner. Um, works great. A lot of the food I eat uh, doesn't take much water for heating up at all. So um, I may or may not really have to use this a lot, but it'll be with me in case I do. Other than that, I've got the bows over there. Um, we went over that during the last video, but in case you need to know again, I'm shooting a recurve. It is a Shakespeare from 1972. So it is a old vintage bow, um, solid green fiberglass on the front and back. Um, shooting Black Eagle, deep impacts with a 55 gram Easton titanium half out and 150 gram uh, grain Strickland Helix single bevel, right bevel, broadhead uh, with some gateway, um, sorry, not gateway, true flight. Um, shield cut um, feathers on the back, but the, but the smaller ones, the little kind of two and a half inch ones. Um, that's pretty much it, that's all the gear I've got. The pack is the Kfaru Woodsman um, on a 22 inch frame, but I'm actually also gonna take the native and I'm strapping it to the outside so I can compress that woodsman down into nothing um, and basically have a day pack during the day, but be able to expand everything out as needed. So that's it, guys. That's all I can think of. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down in the video. We're also going to post a link to this on the Facebook page, post any questions there if you have them. Let me know. Sorry if I've rambled on for a while, but um, I've got one more video, guys, uh, coming for you guys, which will be... Out in a few days, hopefully. Um, it's about food. It's about clean eating out there in the backcountry. And in the meantime, if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.